we have learned that there were other bids that were higher than your guys, but you guys won. Can you give me some insight into how that deal came about and why? Well, I don't know what was the level of the other bids, and uh, I don't have the intelligence you seem to have on, on the competing uh, bids. What I do know is that uh, the board of directors of uh, London Stock Exchange has decided to enter into exclusive conversations with us following uh, the notion process that was run very professionally. And, uh, and we are now uh, trying to, to finalize uh, the signing of this transaction as soon as, uh, as practicable. So uh, uh, an auction process with an outcome that reflects uh, uh, the price and, and the certainty of delivery of this transaction. How much input, how much control will this transaction give the Italians in the process going forward? How much control will it give them within Euronext going forward? This is a, a multi-pronged uh, and multi-company um, uh, story, and I'm wondering how that changes the balance of power. No, oh, it's a, it's a, the, all Italian partners have uh, accepted to find their place within the existing federal model of Euronext. We are not creating something new. We are just welcoming within the Euronext construct that was invented 20 years ago with the federal governance, with the federal college of regulators, with the supervisory board where every uh, stakeholders in various jurisdictions as, as a seat, uh, within the group of reference holders, within the managing board where each country CEO is part of the top level management of the company. I mean, we are welcoming uh, Italy just as we have welcomed in the past in the recent past, uh, the Irish Stock Exchange uh, in 2018 or the, uh, the, the Oscarverse in, in 2019. Maybe the big difference is the size, obviously, because Italy would represent the largest contribution to the Euronext top line. This is the first time we are welcoming a G7 country. Uh, this is the first time we are welcoming uh, the third economy on the European continent. So for sure, that has a lot of implications because the group is more than an exchange. It's an exchange plus a clean house, plus MTS, which is a great uh, fixed income trading platform for Gobbies, plus, plus a CSD, Montetitoli. So it's a great group. It's a large group. And but we have, we have a federal model to, to welcome them. So for example, uh, our partner, uh, Casa Depositi, will join uh, Euronext as a top level shareholders at group level with, uh, with interest totally aligned with all the other shareholders at group level. So they will have best interest to grow the group above and beyond the specific Italian business. So no change of power, just an extension of, of the Euronex construct and, and, and obviously uh, a critical role for, for the Italian partners with the fact that uh, the new chairman of, uh, of uh, the supervisory board of Euronex will be Italian. It was for the past 20 years a Dutch man, it will be an Italian man or Italian lady in, in the coming months. So Maybe I missed it, but I still don't quite have clarity on to how much you're expecting to actually own of this versus uh, the other in Italian institutions. Well, the, the two Italian institutions that are going to join or the group of our reference shareholders are Casa Depositi, which would be at the level of the largest uh, uh, shareholders of Euronex, 7 to 8 percent, and uh, Intesa San Paolo, which would be at the level of, uh, of BNP today, a little bit more than 2 percent. So the idea is to put uh, or Italian partners and to welcome them uh, in, at, the, at, at the level of the, of the largest shareholders of the, of the group in the construct, in the framework of all reference shareholders' uh, organization. You're getting a clearing house as part of the transaction. I'm curious to know what that means in terms of the business. Uh, I'm curious to know what impact that's going to have in terms of the financials of this deal as well. Uh, and I'm wondering what the synergies look like. Uh, what kind of synergies can you extract from this deal? Well, at this stage, when the deal is not even signed, I don't want to, to enter into numbers. Uh, we will be very explicit if and when the deal is, is signed and announced. Uh, but clearly what I can tell you is that this transaction will be transformational for all the players because the single liquidity pool, which is enabled by a single order book and powered by a single technology platform, will be just much bigger. Today, we have in this single liquidity pool the Paris exchange, the Amsterdam exchange, the Brussels exchange, the, 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 the Irish exchange in Dublin, the Portuguese exchange. We will have in a, in a few weeks' time the, the Norwegian exchange, and that will be joined if the deal is successful by the Milan exchange. And that will create the largest liquidity pool in Europe by far. 
that will create and aggregate uh, market capitalizations of about 5 trillion uh, euros, that will create volumes per day above uh, 11, 12 uh, billion euros, that will create a, a situation where roughly 25% of the equity traded in Europe will be traded in these Euronext platforms, and where 28 uh, out of the Eurostox 50 companies will be listed in, uh, on Euronext platforms. But beyond that, uh, that will be the opportunity to welcome within Euronext a very strong fixed income trading platform, which, which is MTS, which is a great asset, to, to allow Euronext to, to have and to own its own clearing house, because we are the only exchange of any decent size with no control of our, of our clearing house. So we will now have a proper clearing house within the group and to welcome a very strong uh, uh, custodian, a very strong CSD, uh, Monte Titori. So all in all, it will have a, a transformational impact on, on the group in a positive way. Synergies in terms of revenues, in terms of cost, have been discussed with our partners and, uh, and they will be released in the context of the full picture of the financial profile and operating profile of the company. As far as the financing of the transaction is concerned, it will be a combination of cash plus debt, plus equity raised from a, a reserve capital increase to GDP and it is somehow low, plus a rights issue to our shareholders. So just to circle back, are, are, what is your level of confidence that you'll have to cut jobs? Are you going to cut them? Say it again, level of confidence on what? Will you cut jobs? Uh, I'm not sure I understand your question. When will you have to cut jobs in uh, order to have those synergies? Sorry, sorry, sorry. okay. It's, it's not an issue to be discussed today, and it's not a question of cutting jobs. We will have a fully integrated organization where uh, there are many businesses where we will not cut jobs and where we will create jobs, and there are some areas where there will be synergies, and those synergies will be implemented across the group, not necessarily only in, in Milan. So uh, it's not a question of, of cutting jobs, because a significant part of the synergies we have in mind will be revenue synergies as much as cost synergies. Stefan, what does this mean for Europe? What does this mean for the capital markets union that our leaders talk about so much? Well, I think we are creating the backbone of the capital market union. We are creating a very large single liquidity pool, a very large single order book in the middle of the Eurozone plus Norway. Uh, we are creating a, a very large uh, uh, platform that will have more than 1,800 listed companies that will have a combination of both blue chips and many SMEs companies. The, the Italian market is a very vibrant SME market, both in terms of mid caps already listed in uh, on, on Borsa Italiana, plus mid caps that could very soon raise equity, especially in the post COVID environment where access to home form, access to equity is very important and more than it was uh, one year ago. Uh, we, we will have a very powerful integrated uh, uh, platform to, to boost the financing of, uh, of SMEs. And that, that's a concrete, tangible contribution to, uh, to the capital market union because you need to change rules, you need to change incentives, and that's what the European Commission is doing with a great deal of, of effectiveness in my view. But you need also uh, 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 market infrastructures that have a critical size, that are operating in a pan-European manner uh, to, to make it happen for real. Because what we want is to for Europe not to be a territory of, of finance takers, but also a continent of finance makers. Uh, and, you know, for, for many players on the planet, uh, the European Union is part of Europe, Middle East, and Africa. For us, it's home. And, and that's why we are building strong market infrastructures with partners from all over the European Union.